going on guys welcome back to the channel oh welcome to your first time here did you hear the news did you hear the news the u.s national debt has increased by half of a trillion dollars in the last 20 days half of a trillion in the last 20 days that's 500 billion increase to their national debt in 20 days now i know that that seems impossible half of a trillion dollars 500 billion dollars spent at the national debt in 20 days but apparently they've managed to do it according to the daily financial trends website this is by david greenberg published october 13 2023 u.s adds half trillion to national debt in 20 days half of a trillion dollars 500 billion dollars added in 20 days less than a month 500 billion dollars in less than a month half of a trillion dollars in less than a month it is astonishing to think about that that is a huge amount of spending according to data released by the u.s treasury department last week in only 20 days the u.s national debt surged by over 500 billion dollars reaching 33.5 trillion dollars as of September the 18th, the U.S. Treasury reported the national debt stood at $33.04 trillion. Three months prior, it had stood at $32 trillion. So in three months, they increased their national debt by over a trillion dollars in three months. The U.S. debt ceiling, which had been set legally at $31.4 trillion, was surpassed in January of 2023. The U.S. economy's total output was only $25.46 trillion, which would mean the economy would be required to expand by 33.5% in order to be able to cover the national debt. So the national debt is more than the gross domestic product. The Biden administration had been petitioning Congress to increase the limit since January. Of course they were. A bipartisan, meaning that the Republicans and the Democrats were both responsible for this they both pushed this through a bipartisan deal was ultimately reached and sent to the <coughs> president's desk where it was signed on january the third it lifted the debt limit until january of 2025 after the next presidential election allowing the united states to avert a debt default which had proven economically disastrous and they act like here apparently that adding a trillion dollars every three months approximately seems to be increasing from that now actually even more it's not going to be economically disastrous it's going to be but they're just putting the, pushing the can on down the road kicking the can on down the road but it's coming hyperinflation is coming you can't print this much currency throw it into the system and spin 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 like this without economic crash that's exactly what's going to happen it required weeks of fierce debate between republicans and democrats you know they were fighting it out man in the halls of congress and the senate they were just in fisticuffs i mean they were clotheslining each other they were body slamming each other they were power driving each other into the floor they were fighting so hard to work this thing out and debate this <laughs> but in the end just like always they increased the spending limit because they all like to spend they all like war they all like sending billions overseas to everyone and their grandpa overseas apparently it seems it required weeks of fierce debate between republicans and democrats before a bipartisan bill to raise the limit was reached the prolonged debate united fears in the market that the measure's approval might be at risk and that the republican majority house might refuse to support the official responsibility act uh if you notice these acts they come up with all the time is right the opposite of what they actually are like the patriot act the inflation reduction act and now this one if you look at the patriot act for example wasn't anything patriotic about it however they give these names of these things and it's really the opposite of what the names actually would make one think that they were to gain support and the media comes on talking about the patriot act the patriot act if you don't support that you're not patriotic if you don't support the inflation reduction act that actually increased inflation had nothing to do with inflation decreasing inflation at all if you don't support that then you're against decreasing inflation you're against being a you're not a patriot it's just the same game over and over and over again but unfortunately most people don't see it they do these and they use the media to 
sway public opinion and to put a picture in everyone's head that is the opposite of what it actually is. It's astonishing. Had the government defaulted, the perception of unreliability surrounding its debt instruments would have limited its ability to borrow pay its bills, which possibly could have triggered chaos overseas, impacting interest rates and mortgage rates in other countries as well. It's crashing. That's what's happening, guys. The economy is crashing. There's no two ways about it. They're kicking down the road, increasing the debt, increasing inflation. It's artificial. And when it comes crashing down, it's going to be Venezuela, in my opinion. However, we are going to go into war before that happens. This is from Zero Hedge by Tyler Durbin, Saturday, October the 14th. An economic worst-case scenario for Israel-Palestine war. On Tuesday, I published a post on X Twitter which summarized an economic worst-case scenario for the Israeli-Palestinian war, including 10 points. The conflict escalates into a regional war with the U.S. becoming directly involved. It's going to. OPEC responds with an oil embargo. Iran closes the Strait of Hamas. The price of oil reaches $300 a barrel. Think about that, guys. It's going to do to the economy. Europe succumbs to a full-blown energy crisis due to LNG shortage. Massive spike in energy prices revigorates inflation with central banks responding accordingly. Financial markets and the global banking sector collapse. Debt crisis engulfs the U.S., forcing the Federal Reserve to enact yet another financial market bailout. Petrodollar trade collapses. Hyperinflation emerges. And that's exactly what's going to happen. At least a lot of this is going to. Conclusions. In any case, the scenario outlined above underlines the seriousness of the situation we currently find ourselves in. And it's very serious. People just don't realize it. Or they don't want to think about it and think it'll go away, apparently. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict has the capacity to, one, deliver an energy checkmate for Europe, and two, initiate a devastating collapse of the U.S. economy. However, it should be noted that while it's currently unlikely that we will see all ten points come to pass, if we reach even the first points, they would deliver a crushing blow to the fragile global economy. That's why the situation needs to be followed very closely. Regardless, it may not be a bad idea to buy gold, gasoline, gas, which is the same thing, and wood if you have a stove. He didn't mention food and ammunition, other supplies, gardening supplies, gardening seeds, stockpiling water, water filters, and things like that. He just said buy gold, gasoline, and gas, which is the same thing. He could mean propane gas, something like that maybe. And wood, if you have a wood stove, which is a great idea if you do have a wood stove. And gasoline is a good idea. Some silver is also a good idea, not just gold. And keep your gas cans filled up, keep your automobile filled up. If you can, you know, store back as much gasoline as you can for your automobiles. And 100% gasoline is better than having the gasoline with 10% ethanol because it actually stores better. The ethanol is what breaks down in the gasoline and causes that not to store as long. So if you can find a place that sells 100% gasoline, get that, and also use stable to extend that life of that gasoline even longer. Anyway, it is... It's going to be bad, it really is. I mean, it's scary. Yeah, I've, been pre I've been prepping for a long time, and even now, I'm sitting here thinking, this is not going to be good. This is going to be horrific. This collapse is going to be. And I can imagine what people who aren't prepared is going to do when this does happen. When this balloon burst, which is going to, people's going to go crazy. I mean, it's going to be complete pandemonium and chaos, unfortunately. Guys, this article over here on the Daily Mail FBI warns of a mosque copycat terror attacks on U.S. soil and urges public to watch out for lone actors amid a heightened environment of fear following the deaths of 1,200 Israelis. And, you know, no doubt Hamas is here, as is every other terrorist organization, every type of criminal and everything else has come across the border in the last few years, and it's embedded themselves in the United States and is waiting to carry out these attacks. And, in my opinion, it is coming, and... Unfortunately, it's going to be like 9-11 in my opinion. If you've done any research in the day, you know what happened on 9-11? Because they want to go to war again in the Middle East. They want to take out Iran. And that's what's going to happen. There's going to be an attack here in the United States. You're going to have the media, womp, 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 the politicians, womp, womp, womp. And they're going to take us to war in the Middle East and war with Iran. And from my understanding, Iran has hypersonic missiles. 
so they could sink, you know, possibly sink an aircraft carrier. They could hit Israel, targets in Israel pretty easily. And in these Israelis, their security measures, you know, the Iron Dome couldn't stop those hypersonic missiles, from my understanding. So, you know, when Iran gets into this, it's going to get even more serious. These uh, Hezbollah and Hamas are serious. However, when you get Iran, when you get Syria, when you get these other countries all involved in this, which is what's going to happen, it's going to be all out war in the Middle East. And who knows what else could happen during that process. We could see, more than likely we will, see China invade Taiwan. We still had the war going on in Ukraine with Russia. In Ukraine, North Korea could attack South Korea. I mean, it's, it's just all exploding all at once. And when it does... It's going to be disastrous for us here in the United States as far as the economy goes, the supply chain goes. It's not going to be good. So, guys, if you can at all, if you can afford to at all, stock up on some canned foods, some pinto beans, some rice, some cooking oil, some oats, some sugar, some honey and things like that. And stock how much you can possibly buy. Get armed. Stockpile some fuel sources, some firewood, for example, to heat your home with. Get your... Uh, Natural gas, if you have the tank outside, get that filled up. Get all your pro the propane you need to heat your house because it's coming winter. You don't want to be sitting at home freezing. And the price is going to go sky high, in my opinion, of all these uh, fossil fuels, oil, gasoline, diesel. It's going to go sky high. And the economy is even worse with the national debt. We talked about that a minute ago. I mean, it's just a perfect tsunami of things that's happening right now to destroy the country, destroy everyone's finances and put everyone into poverty and, and that's the best case scenario because when all these nuclear powers get involved, I mean it may go into a nuclear World War III and it seems that's what they actually want the stuff they're doing, the stuff they're pushing it's like you have uh, that guy from uh, North Carolina, the senator from North Carolina uh, what's his freaking name anyway, uh can't think of his name right now, guys. I'm going to tip my tongue. I can't think of it. He is calling. He's already called for nuking, nuking Russia. He's calling for attacking Iran. He's called for uh, uh, bombing Taiwan to destroy the chip manufacturing in Taiwan if China tries to invade, which would cut her own throats because they make 90% of the microchips. And if that the microchips coming from Taiwan, 90% of those, we have no electronics. Everything pretty much shuts down over time as those things break, crash, and they try to repair those, and there will be no, there wouldn't be any new things being manufactured. So that's cutting cutting her own throat. I mean, if we did that, and no doubt, you know, China took over Taiwan and controlled those microchips, that would be devastating too. And even during that war between, you know, the invasion, if China invaded Taiwan, which I think they're going to, those plants, more than likely, would cease to exist. And that's going to be devastating for us over here. I mean, it's just one thing after another that is lining up to be a complete crash of pretty much everything. And if people aren't prepped, which most people aren't, and all this stuff happens, the economy, all these wars break out and everything, and we could get hit in the United States here by terrorist attacks or even nuclear, nuclear attacks. I mean... <laughs> It's devastating. And I think about this, and like I said, I've been pregnant for years, and I'm still like, man, I hope this doesn't happen because this is going to be horrendous on everyone, even people like you and I who are prepping. But you can imagine the people who aren't doing anything. And I think it's all biblical leading up to Armageddon, the return of Christ for a thousand-year reign. I mean, what do you think? You know, in the comments below, what do you think about all this? Do you think the economy is great? Do you think, and do you think that Joe Biden has actually decreased the national debt like someone said in the comments yesterday someone actually posted in the comments yesterday and i read that and i'm like what he said the national debt was the fault of republicans and they are responsible also i'm not saying that and he said that uh joe biden had actually decreased the national debt and it's <laughs> it's not true any idiot would know that's not true just look at the numbers look how it's increased I mean, we've increased by $500 billion in the last 20 days. So he's definitely not decreased the national debt and national spending. But anyways, let me know what you think about the video in the comments below. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Thanks for watching. And a quick more matter, I'll see you all in the next video, hopefully.